Welcome to the second screencast related to abdominal ultrasound. In this short screencast, we will cover the appearance of the bowel. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to identify the normal sonographic appearance of the bowel and identify posterior acoustic shadowing related to gas within the bowel. Let's start by looking at a sagittal view of the upper abdomen with the probe positioned in a sub xiphoid location. We can see the stomach running under the left hemi liver. Notice the wall of the stomach has three distinct layers. The outer layer is the serosa and it is hyperechoic. The middle layer is the submucosa and it is hypoechoic. The inner layer is the mucosa and it is hyperechoic. This three-layered wall is characteristic of all bowel structures within the abdomen on ultrasound. If we want to compare that to the gallbladder, we see the gallbladder here on the right-hand side of our screen. The gallbladder has a single-layer hyperechoic wall. If we want to look at that with a graphical representation, we have the bowel on the left and the gallbladder on the right. Again, the bowel has a hyperechoic outer serosa layer, a hypoechoic middle submucosal layer, and an inner hyperechoic mucosal layer, where the gallbladder has a single hyperechoic layer. If we look at the stomach in a transverse orientation, we can again see the complex three-layered wall of the stomach. In this case, the stomach is filled with both gas and fluid, resulting in two characteristic artifacts that we can see from bowel. Here we have the stomach, and then we have gas. The gas does not allow for good penetration of the sound waves, and therefore deep to gas-filled structures we will have shadowing. Some people call the shadowing deep to gas dirty shadowing, but it is shadowing nonetheless as it is artifactual in its echogenicity and the structures deep to it are obscured. In the antrum of this person's stomach, we can see fluid. The fluid filled portion of the stomach does not result in shadowing. Instead, it results in posterior acoustic enhancement. Again, the sound waves can pass through the fluid relatively unimpeded and therefore higher amplitude sound waves hit the soft tissues deep to fluid filled structures resulting in those soft tissue structures deep to fluid to appear hyperechoic. If we move from the upper abdomen into the right lower quadrant we can see a different segment of bowel. In this case we see some small bowel. Notice the small bowel also has a multi-layered wall with a hyperechoic serosal layer, an inner hypochoic submucosal layer, and an innermost mucosal layer. If we shift the probe just slightly, we can now identify gas within the small bowel. We see the small bowel here, and then we see this area of echogenicity with shadowing as we continue to ultrasound the right lower quadrant, another portion of the bowel comes into view, the appendix. The appendix is going to arise from the cecum. In this case, the cecum is gas filled or stool filled and there is shadowing deep to the cecum. Notice the characteristic three layered wall of the appendix. And in this case, the appendix is slightly outlined by hypoechoic fluid, which makes it easier to identify. If we move up to the mid-abdomen and we are in a sagittal or coronal orientation, we can often identify the ascending colon. The colon tends to be more gas-filled than the small bowel. And in this case, the gas is causing dense posterior acoustic shadowing. The posterior acoustic shadowing is obscuring the structures deep to the colon. When someone has a lot of gas in their colon, 
the colon can often obscure critical structures such as the pancreas, the bowel, or even the kidneys. Here is an example in the left abdomen with a sagittal or coronal orientation, and we see the descending colon. Again, the descending colon is filled with gas, and this gas is resulting in posterior acoustic shadowing. In summary, bowel has a characteristic three-layer wall on ultrasound. The outer wall or the serosa is hyperechoic, the middle layer, the submucosa, is hypoechoic, and the inner layer, the mucosa, is hyperechoic. The gallbladder, unlike the bowel, has a single layer hyperechoic wall, helping you distinguish bowel from gallbladder. The bowel can be gas filled, fluid filled, or stool filled. Gas is very common to identify within the bowel and gives you a high degree of confidence that you are looking at bowel. Gas tends to cause a thin hyperechoic line with posterior acoustic shadowing deep to the gas, and the gas can often obscure structures you're trying to image, particularly if the stomach is filled with gas or the transverse colon is filled with gas. These structures can obscure things you're trying to evaluate in the upper abdomen.